Welcome to Madison City Channel's Know Your Candidate interviews, co-sponsored by the League of Women Voters of Dane County. I'm your interviewer, Shell Gross, and I would like to introduce Marcia Rummel, running for Alder in District 6. As we begin, I'd like you to give an opening statement about the educational, vocational, and civic experience you have, which qualifies you for this office and why you are running for Alder. Thank you, Shell, and thanks to the League and the city for your um, constant service to our community, helping voters be informed. My name is Marsha Rommel, and I'm running to be the Alder in the new District 6. I previously served as Alder for seven terms from 2007 to 2021 and stepped down after you know, 14 years. I decided to run again when I, with redistricting, um, we didn't have an incumbent alder and the an, an alder from district two was now in district six, but chose not to run. So I started paying more attention to city politics and I got hooked again. I am a policy nerd type of person and really enjoyed uh, public service. So I, um, as I said, I served for seven terms. I live in the Marquette neighborhood and I've lived here for, you know, since the 1980s. I have served on my neighborhood association as president and for many years just as a, you know, a board member. I um, went through a lot of planning work through the city because they focused a lot on the East Rail Corridor. And I spent um, a lot of my time on the council working to revitalize the East Washington Rail Corridor and the East Washington Avenue with new housing, um, shopping and um, business incubators. So I'm really proud of what I've done. I think I've really helped um, change the built environment. So I wanna give it another chance. I'm gonna focus on affordable housing and making safe and livable streets. Thank you. What actions or programs would you support to enhance public safety in Madison? And in particular, what is your position on the use of body cameras by Madison police officers? I studied and worked with my council colleagues on um, studying police after a series of officer involved shootings, that, some of them in my own district. And so we initiated the a whole citizen review com uh, committee that looked at policies and procedures. So all of these topics came up at the time and I learned a lot about what does it community policing mean? Why are some people over policed or at least perceive themselves to be? And why are, and they tend to live in low income communities. That's, and I saw that when I represented the Worthington Park neighborhood. And so, you know, it really made me think about like, what do we, people want to be secure in their homes and on their bodies and in their workplaces? I think that's, we should be able to provide that. But do we need to have officers respond to every type of problem? I mean, do we treat them as social workers in many respects? And then they worry they don't have enough patrol officers. So I think we need to have a balance between um, some of the specialized services that MPD provides along with a patrol that's adequate to respond to calls. Body cameras is a, a definite issue that I would have grappled with if I were on the council at the time. At some point, everyone shows up at an incident with a camera and the argument is, well, the police should have a camera too. And so that there's more than one point of view being shown. And, and generally, I, I understand that argument. I, I, I also worry that we are in a surveillance society and at least in some communities, you know, they don't always turn on the camera or the camera's not functioning. And so there's that aspect and that also the aspect of how do we preserve all the documentation and for how long? And is it an open record? So for example, if a, a woman were worried about a stalker or um, sexual violence and some incident happened, could you know, could that anything come out and be found? And so I think we have to, to deal with those public policy issues. I know they have a pilot 
And I certainly will look at what they found and how it was used. Um, I mean, I lean towards no, but it's a done deal in a way. So then I'm going to look at making sure that it's a wise use of a technology and are we doing it right? And if we're not, I would put a stop to it. Or I vote that way. I don't know if I could put a stop to it. Thank you. What do you see as the most important environmental issues the city needs to address? What will be your priorities for council action on these issues? You know, I think we're facing a climate emergency and Madison has done quite a few things to encourage uh, the addition of solar. The city itself has retrofitted buildings and uh, bought new um, motor vehicles that are electric vehicles. And I think that's all important. Um, we also face the, the changes with weather. So some, it's either too dry or too wet or we're flooded or something's going on. So I, it's a continuous problem that we're going to need to face. I think one way, one thing we need to do is always uh, try to put in as much green infrastructure as we can, whether, and canopy trees. I mean, my neighborhood really worries that we're older part of the city with narrow street terraces. And do we have enough, if those trees die, will we get a new canopy tree to replace it? But, you know, as we kind of struggle through those questions of how, what kind of tree in, is in the right place, we can have other options like vines and other ways to add green space. We also um, need to look at every, fossil fuels. We can't keep relying on single occupancy driving. And um, so I, I'm not a keen fan of electric vehicles because of the mining of um, minerals that are needed for those. But I think we really need to work on more mass transit. And the city has worked on bus rapid transit and redesigning metro to hopefully serve people better. And so they don't need to rely on single uh, you know, on their car. Um, and, you know, there's things that I'm learning about, like the heat pumps and kind of technology that's available that could reduce people's reliance on gas and electric um, energy. So I think we need to pursue all of those things. Thank you. What is your position on increasing the pay for alders? I, I in general, think Alders spend a lot of time serving the city and their constituents. When I was an alder before, I could say I worked anywhere from 20 to 30 hours a week, and I also had a full-time job. So at some point, who can who has the time for that? And so I think the question becomes, if it becomes a, a full-time job, then it should get paid. But is that a public policy um, answer. Do we want full-time alders who then are reliant always on getting reelected and raising money and doing all those things that, that you know, the, the different election positions we see, you know, at Congress level or the state level, where that's like you're always getting a fundraising note. And I don't know that our residents want that. So I think, um, you know, I think we could probably have a modest increase. I think right now it's about $14,000 a year. So if you want some person that doesn't have some kind of cushion, a financial cushion to apply, we might need to add a little bit more income so that, you know, a student could, you know, get by or a young, a young person or, you know, whoever. Not like it would be their only job, but that it could be something they could you know, make a choice to run and serve. Thank you. What, if anything, do you think the city should be doing to support economic development? I think some of the most important things that we can do is to provide stable housing in neighborhoods. So I really, as I think, you know, what I'd like to do when I come back, if I'm reelected, I want to work on expanding non-market options for affordable housing, whether it's community land trusts or cooperative ownership or land banking, public housing, so that we have more options for people that who can so that people who have a more low income have a right to to the city. You know, not everyone has a right to the city if you can't afford a place. And I I think a lot, and then 
we know there is a, a wealth gap in the African American community, and I think promoting home ownership would add to stability and wealth growth. So those kind of things, plus what we do in community development with youth mentoring and employment opportunities, some assist, you know, how we use our tax incremental districts to fund certain types of, you know, economic development and jobs. So, I, you know, I would, I think we need to leverage all the resources that we have, considering that we're the city and, you know, at some point these are private efforts, but we need, we need a diverse, a, a diverse economy. Thank you. How do you see racial disparities impacting constituents in your district? And are there any actions the city should take to address those? I think that, that the city has taken actions over the years to start implementing the equity lens and in our programs and policy making. And I think that has shifted some of how we um, distribute resources. And I, I think that's a good thing. So in my neighborhood's probably considered you know, it's pretty an older neighborhood and it has a lot of rental housing, but I think statistically it's probably majority white, but it's not all white. And so I think we need to make sure that the, that residents in all parts of the city understand that we have segregation, a history of segregation. We have neighborhoods where people can afford to live in, not in other neighborhoods. And we really need to dismantle all that and keep working on making opportunities available and being mindful that just because I might have it okay doesn't mean everyone does. So when we talk about Madison being such a great place to live, you know, I always hear other people saying, but for who? So we always need to keep in mind that the who needs to be everyone. And, and I think racism is something that we all st struggle with. You know, it's, I know some people will be alarmed by this, but I think it's, we're ingrained in it. And so as, as a white person, I am trying, always try to be mindful that that it exists and I need to I need to participate to help end it. Thank you. What are the most critical issues that you see facing the people in your district? And what would you propose to address these? I think um I think that a lot of well, affordable housing is probably really critical. Um, but most of the new development is at the high end of the market. And while we need new housing, again, as I said earlier, people who are not high income can't afford to live in the central city and you know, be close to those jobs and opportunities. So I wanna really push for you know, more affordable housing and, and, and use city funds you know, to try and um, support nonprofit developers and cooperative developers and other kinds of models. I think the other thing I hear a lot about is traffic safety and pedestrian safety. Now our new District 6 is a, an isthmus-wide district. So East Washington is a, you know, between both sides of the, the new district. And so the safety uh, of being able to cross to go to school or the grocery store is an issue. And we've done the vision zero process of slowing speeds and eventually bus rapid transit will come, but we really need to step up with our, our pedestrian safety and bike safety if this is to be a livable neighborhood. And, and, and the other thing is we are, the isthmus has its own unique issues of environmental pollution and low water tables or flooding. So we're always um, trying to you know, clean up what uh, our predecessors left with us. So I think that will continue those that kind of work. Um, there's a lot of issues, obviously, um, but one that's really important to me is like lo our local democracy. And I think, you know, the city has been, you know, standing up to the right-wing Republican assault on our voting rights. And I think having a strong local government is how we can test new ideas and promote um, change. That And we do need to make a better world. And I think we do that by um, developing our own um, community efforts to work for change. Thank you. What would you like to say to the viewing audience as we complete this interview? I wanna thank you for watching. I wanna say that if I'm elected to serve, I will um, be a diligent representative. I think I did have a, a track record of 
accomplishments. I helped revitalize the East Washington Corridor. I brought Garver to life. It was a dilapidated historic building. I helped build McPike Park. I will apply all that knowledge and skills and experience and persistence to the next term if you choose to elect me on April 4th. And for more information, I have a website, Marsha for d6.com each is the number marsha for d6.com and again thank you for to the league and to the city for making this possible i want to thank marsha for speaking with us and the view, viewing audience for taking the time to know your candidates i want to remind everyone that the primary election day is tuesday February 21st, and the general election is Tuesday, April 4th. As with every election, please vote. On behalf of Madison's City Channel and the League of Women Voters of Dane County, thank you for joining us.